Good afternoon. This is I-24 News here with the hour's headlines. The Israeli police spokesman announced today that police have completed an investigation of Prime Minister Netanyahu's residences. The affair began in February 2015 with the approval of the Attorney General and the State Attorney and focused on a number of issues, including suspected fraud and breach of confidence. A short while ago, we spoke with our diplomatic correspondent, Oz Rosenberg, on the latest details. We're talking about a series of personnel in the Prime Minister's office residence uh, in the past few years, among which the Prime Minister's wife herself, Mrs. Uh, Sarah Netanyahu, who allegedly used public money for their personal expenses. I'm talking about um, stuff like treatment for her father, for, for Mrs. Netanyahu's father. Um, we're talking about moving services, moving furniture from, uh, the res from the Prime Minister's residence in Jerusalem to their private home in Caesarea and uh, private repair jobs to their home in Caesarea, which should not be, um, which should not be at least fully expended by the, by the public's money. Today, with the police, with the actual police, you know, the establishment recommending uh, to commence criminal, maybe, uh, maybe recommending to commence criminal investigations against Aaron Netanyahu, I think uh, this uh, would be a hard thing to shake off. Meanwhile, in a joint operation, the Israeli Shin Bet Intelligence, the IDF, and the Israeli police have arrested a terrorist cell of Hamas activists in the Bethlehem area of the West Bank. The suspects were involved in the planning and execution of the attack on bus number 12 on April 18th in Jerusalem, which injured 19 people. The Shin Bet investigation revealed that the suspects had planned other attacks, including a car bomb and shooting. Our senior defense correspondent Shai ben -Ari joined us earlier with the details. We're talking about a six-man ring of Hamas operatives, some of whom had actually already spent time in prison for their certain Hamas-related activities. Their ages range from 19 to 30. They were involved in a number of plots uh, besides, or alongside, you could say, the bus bombing on April 18th in Jerusalem, which was carried out by a member of this ring, Abdul al Hamid Abu Sur. Uh, 20 injured in that attack, of course, including one seriously injured. Abu Sur himself died later of his own injuries sustained uh, during the carrying out of that attack. Uh, the other plans included a suicide bombing at some point after the bus attack that was planned. Also in October of 2015, one of the members of this ring used a sort of improvised weapon to fire towards an Israeli vehicle with no one being injured, fortunately, in that case. Uh, despite the certain coordinated effort here in terms of this ring, it appears that they had a certain amount of uh, independence. The, the orders apparently did not come up from the higher ranks of the Hamas or its military wing. These people apparently uh, acted on their own volition. At a meeting of the Arab League, the group's chief, Nabil al-Arabi, blasted Israel as a bastion of, quote, fascism and racial discrimination and blamed the country for stalling the French peace talks. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected the initiative and instead proposed bilateral talks in Paris. Arab foreign ministers gathered in Cairo with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and voted Saturday on a resolution supporting the French initiative for an international conference in Paris on the Middle East. The Council is supporting the French initiative and all Arab and international efforts to expand the international participation to solve the Palestinian issue and supporting the French initiative starting of the conference of June 3, 2016. And in other world news, the UN Refugee Agency said more than 700 refugees have been uh, have drowned in the three Mediterranean shipwrecks south of Italy in just the last few days, while some 14,000 are said to have made the dangerous crossing. The next report has more on the situation. Some 14,000 migrants were rescued this week in the Mediterranean Sea. Italian authorities said on Sunday, after a flotilla of ships on Saturday rescued 668 people from the water south of Sicily. The migrants, who said that they had set sail from Libya, are just a handful of the 40,000 people rescued and transferred to Italy since the beginning of the year. The number of miners who make the journey on their own and arrive in Europe is much higher than what we saw last year. So far, at least 6,100 miners with an average age of 14 to 17 have arrived. But we are increasingly coming across much younger children, children of 9 or 10 years of age, who have made the journey alone or who have lost their parents or family members with whom they were traveling. Libya remains a major departure point for sub-Saharan African migrants trying to reach Europe with the help of smugglers, often in flimsy boats. 
With the calm summer weather coming to the Mediterranean, the EU is hoping to avoid the deaths of migrants hoping to cross into Europe. Last week, the EU said it would help rebuild war-torn Libya's Coast Guard in order to tackle migrant smugglers. And while the UNHCR, as well as aid organizations, say that they haven't seen refugees from the Middle East using the Libyan smuggling route, authorities do fear that smugglers are trying to find new routes into Europe after an agreement between the EU and Turkey saw Turkey pledge to work to stop migrants crossing the Aegean to Europe, as well as take back any migrants who had crossed illegally. In return, the EU had taken thousands of Syrian refugees directly from Turkey. According to the International Organization for Migration, over 1,370 migrants have lost their lives in the Mediterranean so far this year trying to cross into Europe, while many other boats used by the smugglers as well as their passengers sink in the Mediterranean without even leaving a trace. And we move to another conflict-stricken area, the Kiev region, where 17 people have died when a makeshift home for elderly people outside the capital caught fire in the early hours of Sunday. The fire tore through the two-story shelter, which is in the village of Litochki, marking the latest tragedy in the conflict zone. Citing preliminary information, the service said that 35 people were at the home when the fire broke out in the early hours this morning. Staying in Ukraine, five servicemen have been killed and four wounded in the past 24 hours as a result of attacks by pro-Russian rebels in separatist eastern regions. This is according to the Ukrainian military. This follows a report of the deaths of seven Ukrainian soldiers last Tuesday, the highest daily casualty figure for government troops since August. A ceasefire signed in February 2015 has failed to quell all fighting in Ukraine's separatist east, with each side accusing the other of violations. Brazilian police are searching for at least 30 people suspected in the alleged gang rape of a 16-year-old girl and of posting the graphic video of the crime on social media. More on the case that has shocked the South American country in this next report by Sam Israel. Police in Brazil continue to investigate the sexual assault of a 16-year-old girl that left the country shocked and say that more than 30 people could have been involved. She just says she was unconscious during the time of the acts. The investigation has to continue. Right now we are waiting for results from the tests and other testimonies that we will get next week. So far, the police have only questioned a few people. One of them, Lucas Perdomo, is a 20-year-old soccer player and reportedly the 16-year-old victim's former boyfriend. However, police are unsure exactly how many men took part in the attack, saying that it could have been as many as 36. The story came to light after images and video of the assaults were uploaded to social media. While the Twitter account that uploaded the footage was suspended, evidence of the assault sparked outrage throughout the nation. I am completely outraged, especially because there's a narrative of justification for what happened to this girl. Because of her history, her social class, the problems she faces, as if she was asked to be raped. That is the worst of all of this. Cases of sexual assault are common in Brazil, as police recorded a sexual assault in the country every 11 minutes back in 2014. Brazil's interim president, Michel Temer, said that top officials were meeting to discuss new measures to stop violence against women. But cases like this continue to tear down the image Brazil wanted to show before the Olympic Games in August. With a former president facing an impeachment trial, an economic recession, an outbreak of the Zika virus, and now this investigation, how Brazil can support its people and restore its image remains to be seen. And that's all the time we have. We'll have more updates for you at the top of the hour. Stay with us.